Hi, I'm Paul, this is Polymate 3D, and today we're going to be comparing resin MSLA cones against their FDM PLA counterparts. Let's check it out. With my recent luck of being able to get an MSLA 3D printer, I decided the first step would be to try and print some 3D printed speaker cones to get an idea of how they perform against the FDM 3D printed counterparts. The printer in question is the much loved Elegoo Mars. After much checking over specifications and user reviews, I chose this model. My main reasons were the positive reviews and the slightly larger build volume compared to the Photon. With printing cones already on their side to make space, each extra millimetre is valuable. At a later stage, once I have used the Mars for a prolonged period, I shall make a review of it. The resin used for the test is the Nova 3D Nova Stand Clear Resin. This was a nice looking, cost effective resin, which I felt would also serve well to give us a baseline on what a typical resin could do. The cones printed are the exact same free cones as used previously with the cone test platform. With the FDM ones being printed in vase mode, the models were simply loaded up and shelled in Fusion 360 to match the same wall thickness as the FDM versions. This also means we create cones which are around the same weight and SPL. The exact same test apparatus and process was used, capturing the data at the same volume levels and then compared it against the PLA cones. PLA was chosen as overall it achieved the highest score with the initial FDM cone test. Enough of the details, how did the resin printed cones do? Starting with the 45D flat angle cone, we see frequency response going out to 2.4 kHz. This is slightly less than the PLA cone, but moving on to the variance, which is at 7.5 decibels, is much better controlled when it comes to cone breakup. This variance in an enclosure and not in open space would likely be very small, so this is a good start. Looking at distortion, this first resin cone continues to impress with a maximum distortion of 0.54% at 6.4 kHz. This is higher than the PLA cone, which was 4.3 kHz, and is showing what is already known, which is that resin maintains its stiffness over layers compared to FDM prints. Next we have the concane cone. Its sole purpose is to determine the cone breakup and thus help us understand how stiff the material is over the layers. Whilst we have the data though, we may as well have a look at how it does anyway. Frequency response extends out to 7.1 kHz and it maintains a good sound pressure level out to around 15 kHz, so with some tweaks it could be made to work. Variance is at a give or take 9 decibels, showing again that the resin cone is maintaining its frequency response quite well. Compare this to the PLA cone which was 14.5 decibels and it shows it is more forgiving for the range in which it can do its job. Distortion as with the previous concave cone stays low at 0.95%. This occurs at 3.1 kHz making the resin on par with the PLA in this current test. I find this interesting as it shows the stiffness of the cone profiles is varying when using MSLA and FDM printing methods. This also means that a driver made from one form of 3D printing may not be a good choice for another type. Finally is the resin convex cone and frequency response extends out to 12.4 kHz. This is a little lower than both ABS and PLA based convex cones but it's not far off. Resin is not the best everywhere. Variance again however is one of its strong points with a give or take 8 decibels. Distortion maintains at a low 0.7% at a very high of 7.1 kHz. This is only 0.1 kHz below what PLA achieved. The final results of the resin cone gives us a store score of 22 out of 30. PLA got 20 out of 30, so it is currently the best overall result. I say currently as we have many, many more materials and variants of the same material to compare and see how it holds up. So what would I conclude in the first venture into MSLA 3D printing? Firstly, is that it definitely has potential to be used as a cone material. Its inherent property to dampen like it does proves very helpful. It has a good frequency response and once dialed in will make a very clean and professional finish as well. 
On the other hand, there's a lot of variables at play when it comes to resins. How will it cope under UV exposure under prolonged time? What is an optimal curing time to get the desired results? Will simply using black resin be enough to mitigate some of these concerns? There are all things to consider, and may well be an area that we explore more as time goes on. The last snippet of detail I want to show from testing is the impulse results. Impulse is basically looking at how the speaker driver deals with the sound output once the frequency has been emitted. The faster the speaker is at doing it this, the closer to the original recording it is. In the original video comparing PLA, PETG and ABS, I showed that PETG was better than PLA and ABS in this aspect, but its lower stiffness made it a tricky material to get both low distortion and a low impulse value. PETG gets to less than 5% in 1.4 milliseconds, where PLA was 3.9 milliseconds and ABS was 3.8 milliseconds. The resin convex cone came in with the same low 1.4 milliseconds to achieve less than 5%, whilst achieving low distortion figures for a wider variance of cone profiles. So I think you will hopefully agree that investigating resin printed cones has been worth the investigation. It has certainly shown its potential, but it needs to have some long-term tests done to look at the viability of using it in a long-lasting design. Lastly, a big thank you to the recent burst of interest in 3D printed drivers and people looking to make them. It has become clear that sourcing parts is tricky sometimes and that my documentation on how to do this needs some work. To the first part around sourcing components, a driver component kit will be made available within the next week for people to purchase, along with a web page on my website to give you links to places to obtain these parts for the US where metric values are not such a big thing. To stuff around guides and documentation, I am doing this step by step and really appreciate everyone's patience. Drop a message below or hit me up on Twitter for anything and everything you may be thinking. It all helps me create a better, more comprehensive way of getting these designs and ideas to you. Thanks to my lovely patrons who continue to help development of this project and make it a reality. Keep your eyes peeled as there will be more news trickling through as my work on how to move forward is finalised. Becoming a supporter not only gives you access to more behind the scenes stuff, it also gives you early access to the Woofer WF81, the full range driver FD51 4PE, a super early version of Tenacious 6 and much more. Thanks for watching and if you're finding the tests and investigations interesting, consider subscribing so you'll know straight away when the next one is up. Take care and see you in the next one.